So we got chicks. Uh, Dad's got them up there to the barn. I'm gonna go see them. They're fuzzy and adorable. All right, so the first batch of chickens, these are laying hens. Um, just picked them up from the post office. They come to us from Ohio. Well, Jalen is holding one, and Jose is holding one. So these are 15 Sussex, speckled Sussex. These are 10 Buckeyes and 10 Rhode Island Blues. And I'm guessing that the little blue chicks are the Rhode Island Blues, but I don't know for sure. So we're going to get these guys or gals up to the um, uh, yeah, the little convenient spot with the heat lamp to keep the, the brooder. The Thank you. So we're going to get the these. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get these ladies up to the brooder and uh, make sure they stay warm and get some food and water and uh, get them started on their on their journey. So we've got um, 75 uh, Cornish crosses coming tomorrow that we'll be raising with these uh, these ladies. So let's get up get them up to the barn. All right. So a couple of things about chickens, they're pretty smart, even at this age. Uh, some new chicken owners, if you're getting a big batch like this, or even a small batch, you may have questions like how how hot does the bruiser need to be, how uh, how much heat is too much, and how, how much is not enough. But the chickens, the chicks, will self-regulate. If you see them pool up underneath the light and huddle as close as they can, you need to lower your light. You don't even need a thermometer. If they're that way for more than about 10 minutes, you need to lower your light. If they make a circle around the light, it means right underneath the light is too hot, so they backed up a little bit. That's fine. That's, that's great. That way as the, the temperature fluctuates, they can move closer or move further away, and they will to regulate their body heat. So uh, they've uh, shipped overnight from Ohio, so I'm going to go get them some food and water and uh, make sure they, they're eating and drinking.
So these chicks that I have here today are known for their foraging ability. The breeds that I that I selected were uh, selected because they're good foragers. And these are some of them. I've already got adult chickens that, that these will be joining when they get bigger and start laying eggs. Uh, but these are the ones that are gonna follow the cows around and clean the pasture for them. Um, eggs is just one of the benefits that we get from the, the laying hens out on the pasture, but really their, their main reason is to clean the field behind the cows. Eat the fly larvae and the other bugs and, and uh, scratch through the, the cow patties and harrow up the field uh, behind the cows and make for a more healthy pasture. Jose, where are we going? Crosses for the brooder. The what? What now? Cornish crosses. It's the, Cornish cross is the breed of the chicken. Oh. There are lots of different variations to Cornish cross, and the ones that we're getting is a part number, which I find ironic. I order my chickens with a part number. But anyway, we're headed out to the hatchery to pick up day-old Cornish cross chickens to put in the brooder with the uh, laying hens we got yesterday. Do I get to hold them? Maybe, if you're good. So, Jose, what do you have? Chicks. Yeah? Yeah. What, what is there, two in there or what? 75. Yeah. Should we make some marshmallow peeps? Yeah. Out of the peeps? Yeah, because they're so sweet. Just to be clear, you don't really make marshmallow peeps out of baby chicken. No, really? Well, <laughs> you know, some people believe everything they hear on the internet. <laughs> what if this is a lie? Because this is going to be on the internet. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we're headed back to the farm with our Cornish crosses to put them in the brooder. You have anything else to say? Not really. They're cute. Are they eating your finger? No. No, those are South Pennsylvania flesh-eating chickens, right? Their teeth are sharp. Oh, their teeth are sharp, huh? Uh-huh. I think I lost my finger. You might have. Under the light. I need to figure out where the warmth is. And we need to count them. Okay. Is it recording? Yeah. Okay.
we've got the water hanging this morning or through all of the uh, um, uh, electrolyte water mix. So I put in the, the hanging water so they, they never run out. It's, it's fed by a garden hose. Uh, bell water, I did a video on these last year. Um, <clears throat> and the feeders are now off the floor and hanging. Not very high, but they're hanging. Uh, we, we have to continually raise them up as they get bigger until they get out to pasture, which is only another two weeks, or uh, maybe a little less, because it's so warm out this year. See. The, next, um, the next step is to remove these boards and uh, put them back further. Um, and put more boards in so that there's a higher barrier so nobody jumps out. And we'll probably be doing that this afternoon or tomorrow. Well, we got the boards taken out. They used to go slide in right there. And I've got three of them put in back here so that they won't jump over. That should be good uh, until they're three weeks old and I can get them back out on, uh, or out on the pasture. So they're all snug and under the light I've got a couple of brave ones that are venturing out into the new bedding. I've got the hanging water up. I've got the feeders hanging. I've got a cow getting into the feed sack behind me. Not the feed sack, but the sack of shavings. What are you going to do with that, Red Steer? Huh? What are you going to do with that? He's curious. So anyway, we got the chicks gone. Look forward to getting them out on pasture. And I'm, I'm working on uh, another another um, video to get some laying hens out on pasture. So this is Dan at Blue Dog Farms, head cowologist and chief chicken chaser. And you have a blessed day.